Alright guys, another week has gone by in July and more comic books be dropping. We got another list for you, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back gainers to another incredible, fantastic, exciting episode of... Comic Games! Yeah! If you knew the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach and this is the Princess of Royal Highness, looking very lovely today, just like usual, doing that princess way, so bow down respect. Alright guys, so today is Monday and we have a brand new drop list for you. Really exciting, so we're rearranging the show, so Mondays is the new drop list. And, uh, yeah, that's gonna be, uh, the main thing for the show. So, um, uh, before we get into the drop list, Zach needs to drop, uh, do a little beer drop. Yeah, yeah. I need a drink, because I'm thirsty, Ooh. and I need that big energy. So we got a Mike's <laughs> Hard Red Freeze. I don't know what that means, like, am I supposed to freeze this beer, am I not? Anyways, this is what it looks like, it's 5%. The red and Freeze. Usually I try to go for the 8 but, mm -hmm. oh well, it's a light day today. Let's do this. Oh, it smells good. It tastes like an unfrozen otter pop. Really? Yeah. With alcohol? Yeah, with the alcohol. Well, I always make all my otter pops have a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> just to let you know. Drunken <laughs> otter pop. Oh, yeah. The drunken otter. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, so... If you're new to uh, the drop list, which hopefully you're not, because uh, we've been doing the show once a week, um, it's a really exciting, really fun. We basically scour the internet for a hot list from one year ago, trending our hot list of books that were like really important a year ago and then have significantly dropped in price one year later. And uh, we kind of let you know our feelings on whether or not like it's a good time to buy this book because it's dropped in price or... Um, it was only a one-time fluke that it got really, really hot and then it needed to just, you know, continue to keep dropping and maybe you should stay away from it a little bit. We'll kind of go over that with you. Uh, surprisingly enough, this, this episode is going to be special in Avengers episode. By accident, we went through the drop list. For some reason, Avengers were trending a year ago. I don't even think there was a movie coming out in particular, but a lot of the books on the list turned out to be Avengers books, so this is a special edition of Avengers Assemble. So let's kick it off. Right off the list, the first book is not an Avengers book, though, even though I just said all that stuff. Kick it off the list, we have Inhumans number five. This is Inhumans volume number two from 1999. We don't have this book. I actually recently purchased this one because of the drop list. So uh, this is actually covered by Jay Lee and uh, uh, Paul Jenkins in the story on this. First appearance of, at the time, Black Widow Yelena Belova. So um, if you go through this, this one in particular, she's in the book in quite a few panels, but her face is covered like on purpose, so you're not supposed to tell like exactly who she is. So there's a little bit of discrepancy on whether or not this is like her first full appearance, but I would say like as a group, I would think it's her first full appearance and uh, important book. She does have those other ones where it's like the Black Widow solo story, which is like her first Pretty cool. solo, which those are some really cool artwork on those as well. But obviously this was really popular a year ago because of the Black Widow movie kind of wrapping things up and then more importantly you had the uh, Hawkeye TV show was coming out oh I think it was out or uh leading up to that point you were starting to get previews for that because that came out last Christmas mm -hmm. and uh she had a pretty cool exciting role I think she was actually one of the better characters in the uh, Black Widow movie you know Florence Pugh was probably like the one of the main stars of that that whole movie but uh you know we know that she's coming back in uh we know that she's coming back in uh, Thunderbolt, so she's probably going to be coming back the way they're leading that up to it. So, uh, you know, it could be a good time to pick this one up. We thought it was a good time because we just bought a copy a lot, a lot cheaper than I thought we'd get one. But, Zach, uh, what's the numbers on this uh, dropping down there? Oh, what do you got dropping on this book? Plus, a human's cover is really cool. It is cool. Mm -hmm. um, recent set or Sales a year ago was $709 for a CQC 9.8. Now, it's $499.99. Oh. Pretty significant drop. Uh, $490 to $799.95 is the range, so it's pretty close to the lowest it's ever been in a year. Average price is $625.01, so $625 and one penny, yay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, buy, buy this book, at least get this book raw. You, if you want a high grade CDC, it's all dark cover, so you might want to just buy it, you know, at already a 9.8. But you could also take a chance with a couple copies and see yourself the ones that don't get 9 eights. Yeah. I think the one we got coming is raw. Definitely has a couple spine ticks on it. But it's a hard book to find. Like, I've been looking for this book. And it's, you know, I saw one at a con and they wanted a little bit more money than I wanted to pay for it now because it is on the drop. You know, they're 
kind of had those last year prices on it, but uh, you know, it's definitely going to go back up though. It's going to go crazy. Yeah, buy, yeah. buy this book at yeah. least raw. People at like least. people like this character a lot. You know, they're going to use her as much as they can, especially without having the regular Black Widow anymore. They got this one to go off. You know, the White Widow, or they call it now, right? Oh, you're such a poser. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, let's do this. Okay, and uh, you know, wouldn't be. Um, wouldn't be a dropless if we didn't have some DC goodness on here. So uh, this is a little bit of a left left winger. Here we got Doorway to Nightmare number one from 1978. We actually had this book. That's how awesome that cover is. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Michael uh, Kaluta and David Michelini again on uh, on this book. So uh, first appearance of Madame Xanadu, and I I haven't actually read this. I need to read this book. Uh, she's basically a mystical character. Uh, pretty cool. Um, side note, uh, she did get her own title after this, which actually has a little bit of value, too. That Madam for, Xanadu. Yeah, Madam Xanadu, number one, has a little bit of value as well. But a year ago, this book was getting popular because J.J. Abrams got attached to do a uh, a TV series based on Ooh. Madam Xanadu, and that was announced in June of 2021. So, a little longer than a year ago, all of a sudden everyone's like, because I remember that. We were all like, hey, Zach's like, I have a couple copies of this book. And it was getting hot. And we were like, maybe we should look for more of them. And uh, you know what happens when they announce big news like that and nothing happens for a year? It, no one's heard anything else. So, it yeah. goes back down. Everyone forgot. So, um, you know, sometimes when J.J. Abrams says he's going to do something, usually he follows through and does it. So, um, it might not be a bad idea to get this book. So, uh, Zach will uh, let you know. So, price wise for a CQC 9.8 a year ago was $910. Now it's $645. The range is $645 to $910. So it's at the low right now. The average is $783.33. It seems kind of still kind of high for a book of this kind of era. And it's, that's oddly expensive for a DC 70s book. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I yeah. mean,. I, I would get this book. I don't know if I'd get it in nine point eight unless you get a screaming deal. But I would, I would definitely get this book. It's definitely going to go back up another thirty, forty percent. It's a cool pretty cover. Soon. It's so cool cover. Yeah. I mean, I I think you can get a a nice copy for uh, about a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You'll probably double it in about a year or less. And that's Just pretty enjoy good. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it like a fine wine. Mm -hmm. Yes. From the seventies. Bite. All right, cool book. All right, now the rest is Avengers. Now we got all Avengers all the time. Oh. This is a cool one, and uh, we don't have this one. Uh, we know someone that has it, but uh, Avengers. <laughs> this is back when when everyone thought the titles weren't that long. This is a long title. So Avengers: The Terminix Objective, number one from 1993. This is uh, Mike Gustavic <laughs> and Mark Grudenwald uh, with the creative team on this. But uh, this is. First, Eliath and uh, the supreme being of the time span. So, um, kind of cool characters. That giant purple mist um, mm -hmm. creature that we got to see in the Loki TV show, which is why this popped up. Weird book. This is from 1993, and I don't think there's anything good, anything else good in this run besides this one book. <laughs> but uh, it was kind of cool to see him in the Loki TV show, and it's actually really powerful. It's kind of like whatever Kang's not in charge of, Eliath is in charge of that. They kind of equally share all the time. And on a side note, I'm not making this up, uh, this is the first appearance of the Council of Kings as well, and you get to meet King Swatch, King Rolex, and King Cassio. They're very original name. <laughs> <laughs> Rolex. <laughs> right? Stupid. So, also yeah. showed up in this book. Um, so, it's a cool, like, sweet hollow foil cover as well, too, which makes it kind of cool. And, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of one of these books where... It probably was never going to get expensive unless Disney Plus did this Loki TV show and popped up. And yeah, it probably got more expensive than it needed to be. But <laughs> it'll like drop down to at least a more reasonable mm -hmm. price. But it'll never go back. I don't think it'll go back down to like a dollar book again, you know, like it was. And maybe it's actually going to tell me differently. But I mean, even if it stays at that 5 or $10 range, at least it's something cool we'll always remember. But Zach, more importantly, how far did it drop? Oh, and I will we see Eliath again? I mean, it will have... You had a lot to say. It has some <laughs> legs, but it has some small legs. Um, <laughs> prices a year ago, there was not that many sales, like hardly any. So that led me to my next step. I'll tell you in a second. So price-wise, a year ago, it was $225 for a CGC 9.8. 
No, it's thirty-two dollars. <laughs> oh, it's almost like ten percent of the price. Uh, price range thirty-two dollars to two hundred twenty-five dollars, high to low. Average one twenty-six sixty-two. So I looked into the census on there. There's only twenty-six nine point eight on there. Whoa. And there's only seventy-five graded. So this is one of the books you can't really press out. So you have to have it pristine. Yeah. From yeah, the nineties. Yeah, false. So yeah, those foil covers. Let's do a cold press, which we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to do that. No. Uh, I mean, thirty-two dollars for nine point eight. You won't lose money on it. And if they use them again, why not? I mean, you'd make money, and it's a cool book in a nine point eight. Yeah. But like I said, they're probably not going to use them again. But he'll always be. A, in the history, the memory of that TV show, you're gonna rewatch it again. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, I should get the first appearance of a light. Yeah, and then you get to and say that cool name, Avengers: The Terminix Objective Number One. And it's the first Council of King, so that's they're gonna show that. They're gonna show that eventually. So yeah, I wouldn't for thirty-two bucks, just get it. You won't cry about it. That's like an hour and a half of work. Yeah. Yeah. Or less. All right. Hopefully less. All right. More Avengers. Maybe five minutes away. Come More on. Avengers. More goodness Avengers. on the line. We have Avengers 43 from 1967. Some Thank Silver you, Age goodness. Zach, you know how much you love the Silver Age. Yeah. Uh, we got John Buscema and Roy Thomas as the creative group on this one. That's cool. I have Roy, uh, John Buscema cover on that one. Uh, first appearance of Red Guardian, Alexei uh, Shotokov. Alexei Shotokov. So, um, <laughs> cool thing about this book, uh, you have uh, Red Guardian, who in this story is the husband of Black Widow, which in the movie they switched him to the father of Black Widow, because that works, Awkward. right? <laughs> you know, like, that works, you know, you're once the husband, now you're the father, but, uh, you know, uh, oddly enough, as big of a character as we all feel like Red Guardian is, he died in issue 44. So,. Like, the very next issue was his origin and death. No, hopefully no spoilers. <laughs> this came out in the 60s. But uh, cool character overall. I think, uh, you know, he was really awesome in the TV show, and the movie. David Arbor played him, you know. Uh, but, oddly enough, he didn't die in the movie. So, he's still going on. I don't know how they're going to uh, keep him going forward in the MCU. Is he going to be a member of the Thunderbolts? I don't know. I don't know, because they already have the White Widow is going to be in there. I don't know if they'd have him both in there. But, you know, just uh, overall, I think... You know, for not being like that important back then, it's a cool cover to say the least. Yeah, yeah. it's iconic cover, which is just amazing. But uh, you know, if you love it, you got to have it. I think I have two copies of it now because I loved it so much. You know, just a uh, just a cool. You know, David Arbor, so cool. Just did such a good job. You know, you kill so many people. I'm so proud of you. Yes, yes, <laughs> so great, so great. Still fits. Yeah. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, Zach. How do you feel about this book? I feel. I think he needs to make a little appearances every show until he gets his own little show. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Thunder Rolls. Like, all right, casting call. It's like, hey, it's me, Red Guardian. He's like, get out, you Red Guardian. You already got your daughter. Team. Next. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, you guys are here for the prices, not my for my ramblings. Um, so Avengers forty three a year ago in a uh oh, it was a nine out. That's right. And a Nino was going for seven hundred seventy-five dollars. Now it's three hundred and seven dollars. It's a herder. It's a herder. Range is three hundred seven dollars to nine hundred dollars. Uh, six hundred and sixty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents. Uh, just to show that there's really a weird kind of price difference, but it's dropped consistently. We got eight point five here. That was selling for four hundred ninety-nine dollars and twenty-five ninety-five cents. To three hundred twenty-six dollars, so it's dropped all along the board. I wouldn't buy. I, I wouldn't be mad if you got this book. It's a classic Silver Age book. It's going to go up on average. When the thing, the thing is, when like say Avengers get pop, you know, gets popping off again, and well, every movie, all the Avengers book across the board, especially the keys, go up in price massively. So mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing. Get this book for three hundred seven dollars. It's going to be a thousand dollars in five years or less. Hopefully. <laughs> more, more, yeah. more than likely. Yeah, that's more than the, likely. That's yeah. how the trends yeah. go. Yeah, I would get this book. Um, just depending on which grade you get it, you can get a high grade for raw copy for basically nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I know we've been I able. Yeah, we've been able to find some raw copies for like decent prices. Like, yeah, it's like, like that one. Yeah, I think we got that for what twenty bucks. Yeah, it was pretty clean if I remember. Oh, that little corner. It's there. got a corner. Has a little corner. A corner. Other than that, it's beautiful. Anyways, yeah. other than that, beautiful. Okay. 
Last but not least on the drop list, another Avengers book. Uh, much So that last one was double digit. This is a triple digit, but a very deep triple digit. You have Avengers 684 from 2018. Uh, we actually have this one. And Zach has a 98. Mark Brooks and Mark Wade uh, combo on this. The Mark combo did this one. The Mark combo. The Mark combo. Um, but uh, this is an important book because it's the first time that we understand that Hulk is immortal. A lot of people call this like first immortal Hulk, but technically... He's been immortal the whole time, just nobody knew about it until this story. Um, other than that, it uh, doesn't have any major significance, but that is pretty significant. And it's a very iconic cover for the for the book. Plus, it like leads you into, this just came out in 2018. 2018 is the same time they started the uh, Al Ewing uh, Immortal Hulk run, which is considered like the best run of, of Hulk of all time. I believe it. Give or take some of the early stuff. But, uh, you know... Just a, just overall cool. I mean, once you learn that Hulk's immortal, crazy stuff have happened. I don't know if, if any of you guys have been reading. I know, like, in the Green Door, they, like, eat Hulk. Like, a bunch of people roast him and eat him. And then he, like, comes out of their body and, like, reforms oh, into, no. like, a person. I know in Immortal Hulk, they cut him up and dissect him, and he comes back to life. All kinds Ooh. of crazy stuff. His healing factor is, like, insane. Same. Yeah, like, insane. So, just cool that he's immortal. You know, he'll be around for a long time. And I think She-Hulk's immortal, too, right? It would yeah. have to be at that yeah. point. At this point. Oh, I've never seen anything weird happen with her yet. I don't know if I want to see that. No. But on a side note, there are two variants to this book. And surprisingly enough, neither of them are worth anything. Which, that's kind of rare for a book like this to mm. be really good. The second print cover is uh, pretty nice. But it's not worth anything. Pretty much. I mean, maybe $10. $10 maybe a little bit higher. The other one is a Scott Young variant. Which is also not worth anything. And he looks like a pickle. Doesn't he look like a little pickle, yeah, like crawling through a crevice? Pickle. Yeah, like yeah. pickle. Oh, I don't know. Weird. Two weird books, but uh, I don't know. Zach, how much does this drop? It hasn't dropped much, so that's interesting. I also um, don't know why this book was trending a year ago either. Maybe because I think they thought they were going to do an MCU story on, on Immortal Hulk. I don't know. Yeah, Sorry, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, it's all good. Mm -hmm. uh, so prices one year ago was about $150. Now it's $125. Range is one hundred and seven dollars fifty cents to two hundred twenty five dollars. Uh, average Jeez. is one fifty nine twenty four. This is a very steady book. People are not selling it below a certain price, so you know this could be, you know, could be a fairly decent book. I don't think it's going to be a gigantic. Oh yeah, twenty eighteen was a year of the mm -hmm. mortal Hulk. This is the best of that, of that year and probably decade. They're probably not going to say that. They could. They could. They could. I'm already saying. It. Uh, <laughs> it's a great book. I mean, you're not going to be wasting your money by buying this book. Um, the cover, all of the covers are really bad. I don't like any of the covers. I like that one. I we can agree that's to That's abomination on the cover, I Is believe. It? Yeah. Oh, no, uh, that's Hulk. I don't know. It looks, it looks weird. He's got Hulk's teeth. There's no uh, way that's abomination. It's not Hulk's teeth. Um, but, uh, it yeah. Like Solomon Grundy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> get back in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would get this book. I mean, it has a chance of going big. I doubt it, but you're not going to lose money on it either. No, probably not. No, I mean, it led into something pretty amazing. So that's kind of the point. I mean, all, out of all the books, I'd probably go for the Humans 5 as the number one pick to get it. That's what we should do. We should be like, out of all these five, definitely in Humans 5. Yeah, all right. Zach's starting something new right off the top of his head. I like Yay! it. We can go with it. We're growing. We're rolling with the punches here, guys. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're getting these shows a little more streamlined, a little more uh, even for you. So, um, yeah, as usual, guys, if you like the drop list, love the drop list, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you always know when the, new, when the live shows are dropping Wednesday. We don't know what time, any, you know, could happen. Um, yeah, and uh, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear... Like, if you guys had any of these books on the drop list, whether you think it was a good idea to pick them up, a lot of people are like, hey, I think I might go get that book now because it's on the drop list or, you know, which, you know, we do that sometimes. So, uh, but yeah, Zach, you got anything else? You got to share how you do this. You got to be stuck in the cage and then eventually some person that has powers or maybe not, I don't know, releases you and people call you mad and you you know, someone takes a child and yells, I have the child and you're like, <laughs> I'm going to get that child back. And then you meet a girl that's evil, but then somehow she's good, and her parent was actually the one that's made her, like, pseudo sometimes evil, sometimes not. She's a redhead, so I like it. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, that's how you become Mad Mardigan. 
the hammer drops. Mm-hmm. All for everyone. I like that Willow. You live right in the Willow. Willow. That's it. Become Willow or Mad Mardigan. Mad Mardigan. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. It's like Val Kilmer's best role. Yeah. Eat people. It's <laughs> only good. No, man. Tombstone. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always forget about that one. Yeah. Oops. All right, guys. So... Until we see you next time, stay safe and remember. Get those mad games! Or Princess will hit you with a hammer. It's hammer, hammer time! Hammer, hammer down! Yeah! Ha ha! Peace out! Peace! Uh, see you on Wednesday! Live! Don't forget!